That's for another show. That's, that's, another show. that's an entirely different show. I have to tell you guys, against the Hornets, Jimmy Butler responsible for slapping lipstick, blush, and false eyelashes on that mm. sucker. He scored 52 good. points, 12 rebounds. He was 21 of 22 from the line. For a night, things were pretty festive in Chicago. But you didn't have to look that far to see the problems lurking underneath. Rajon Rondo rode the bench the entire game. This is a sharp fall considering just a month ago, when we traveled to Chicago for the Bulls game against the Cavs, Rondo posted a triple-double last night, that night. Back then, he, Dwayne Wade, Butler, and even Gar Foreman, they were all singing each other's praises. All good just a week ago. But in the time since, Rondo has been suspended for a game for throwing a towel at an assistant coach. The Robert Ory? He was benched <laughs> midway through a game against Indiana. Will y'all let me get through this? <laughs> After he finished the first half scoreless and he was a minus 20 that night. He was benched entirely against Milwaukee. That's a game Chicago still lost. And then benched again last night. And this is not just a Rondo issue. It has become clear the Bulls are at a deeper crossroads as an organization. Remember at the end of last season, the Bulls missed the playoffs, they shipped Derrick Rose to New York, and they had serious discussions about trading Butler away. They were contemplating a full rebuild. Instead, facing some fan pressure, they decided to keep Butler and sign Rondo. Now, Rondo says at the time, he was told the team would play a certain way and that he would have some autonomy out on the floor, but so much has changed since then. I mean, Wade, first of all, fell into the Bulls' laps, and while he has been very strong for them, there have seemed to be some clashes lately between the playing style the coaching staff wants and the personnel that the Bulls have to execute that style. Chicago 4-8 and eight in its last 12 games, slipping into a tie to se for seventh in the Eastern Conference, and our Mark Stein reported that while Fred Hoiberg isn't yet on the hot seat, the front office has started to evaluate whether he's really a good fit as head coach. Now, there's some feeling that benching Rondo is a way for Hoiberg to assert his authority, test out the young guys he believes in, and hey, that is certainly his right to do. And Hoiberg says Rondo has handled his benching admirably. But Rondo has also made it clear, if he doesn't return to the court soon, he wants a trade or a buyout. And oh, by the way, with all this going on, the Bulls are advertising Rajon Rondo bobblehead night next nice. week. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, look, the Bulls are going to have to make some decisions here fast and hope in the meantime Butler can keep bailing them out as their younger players develop. So, guys, what do they do next? What do you see as the next move for the Bulls? <sighs> <laughs> Is that good, huh? Yeah, I mean, my, I just didn't I mean, think they've gotten themselves into quite a situation here. I my thing, I just didn't think Hardberg was the coach from the jump for those guys. So you think the you think the problem starts there? I think they need a more established coach, more respected coach, you know, Larry Brown caliber. Not saying him, but that type of coach where they can respect that's been proven in this league. I don't think Hardberg is the guy. Rondo's still a great point guard. I, I I like the way he's handling it, but everybody knows it's gonna get to a point where he gets to lashing out and it's gonna become a problem. So we'll see what happens. Jack, I'll tell you, you could have Phil Jackson, Larry Brown, Lenny Wilkins, Red Holtzman. <laughs> And Red Auerbach all on the same staff. They're not helping this. <laughs> this. This is not a good team. It's not a well put together roster. Rachel, we talked about this earlier. Whereas there are some things that happen, a deal get made, and then later on down the line, it's like, oh, that didn't, that wasn't so good. And hey, sometimes thought. things don't work out. You can't, yeah. you can't know everything ahead. Of you time. can't know everything ahead of time. But there's some deals that happen on the day of, and you're like, that wasn't good. Right. Signing Rondo, signing Wade, and to this team, that's not good. I'm not saying they're not good players, mm -hmm. but you just put together a bunch of non-shooters in today's NBA and said, all right, now go win some games. Right. That's not going to happen. Well, Wade is actually shooting better than he has but, previously. But, we won't have that discussion, too, year. because his three-point percentage when you were doing your victory lap was here, <laughs> and now it's, it's been still, going like... Do, do, okay, do, do, but it's do, still do. better than it was last season. I mean, he is doing... what Dwayne Wade he's, is doing for he's them been better for what them. they need him to exactly. do. He is shooting better than he has, and, and obviously taking the tutelage of, right. yes. uh, of Hoiberg part, and the yes. shooting coach, as he, as he says. And frankly, Dwayne Wade is an important piece to Jimmy Butler's development. Sure. Being Question. leader, being a buffer between the coaching staff and the That's locker room. That's all true. But I don't know what they were thinking they were going to do with Rajon Rondo... Considering well, he's in some ways given them what they expected from him too. Especially as they say, he says, if, well, I'm going to take him at his word when he says, they told me I would have autonomy. Players never come up with quotes like that and make them up. Right. They tell you that. That was true. So the Bulls sat there and, and sold this dude a dream about him doing what he wanted on the court. They, and they're having bobblehead night, so obviously they thought he was going to have a great because the marketing department booked that. I tell you, it was a month ago that that they were, everyone was saying things were going well there. I mean, is this just a case of they didn't expect things to go the way they thought they were going to go? I don't see how they couldn't the have signing. Thought, uh, how? How? 
Yeah. Houseway. Houseway. Yeah. How did they not see this Houseway. coming? <laughs> I do want to talk about another Eastern Conference team that is struggling a bit right now, the New York Knicks. The Knicks gave up 115 points in last night's loss to Orlando. Is that bad? This, well, this was a Magic team that came in averaging 99 oh. points, so yeah, it's not what you want. Uh, head coach Jeff Hornacek feeling, well, a bit lost afterward. He said his players were trying, but that maybe, quote, they're just not capable of playing defense. Oh. Then he said, we have to find somebody who can play some defense. Oh. I don't know if he's going down to the bodega. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I mean, look, the Knicks are lost. <laughs> <laughs> Get Nero in there. Can Nero play defense? <laughs> the Knicks have lost five straight. Mellow's shooting 36% during that streak. I mean, who who here is to blame for the Knicks' struggles? What do you think, Steve? <sighs> they told me to stay away. <laughs> it's Phil's fault. There you go. I'm sorry. Say it. Let them know. Fault. Get off the chest. Fault. Listen, Hornacek is coaching what he has. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know how Phil thought adding Brandon Jennings, Courtney Lee, was going to make them a winning team. I don't understand what he thought or how that was going to help them in the East, especially when you're looking at the Cavs and everybody trying to build their teams to compete with the Cavs. He was not thinking that. I think he was trying to build a college team and bring the Knicks to the college level because he did not make that team better, and they're not going to win with that to team. Be fair, I blame Phil. I blame to Phil. be fair, he put defensive mastermind Kurt Rambis in charge of the oh, defense. I'm and I'm shocked. I'm the one I'm shocked. I'm that sensing things some haven't sarcasm changed yet. here, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm with that. It, it's Phil Jackson's fault. I can't blame Jeff Warnasek for not being able to make chicken salad out of Watch it. whatever that, yeah, whatever they put together. <laughs> I can't even blame. I know a lot of people want to blame Carmelo, but this isn't a Carmelo thing. Even though I love this play right here, even though he's thirty-five for hundred. Since no, why do you bring that up? Man? <laughs> That's true. We, we have some. We, we have, have some video yeah, right this, of Melo recently. This is this is awesome. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> this is when well, you just give up on the play before you even you know what's gonna happen. But but. Jeff's like, yeah, I'm going back to the bench. <laughs> yeah. Even so, <laughs> not, it's not that these guys' <laughs> fault the defense isn't good. <laughs> The defense isn't good because they don't have defensive personnel. Because their main defensive signing of the offseason was a dude with one leg, Joe Kim Noah. And that's, again, what we talked about, Rachel. Their deals that down the line are like, oh, yeah, that didn't work out. And their deals that on the day it happened like, that's not going to work out. Bill said he knew Joe Kim Noah was healthy because he made him do a pull-up. You kidding me, man? <laughs> you can't challenge the effort, though. Effort has to be there every night. And, sure. Yeah. Right. That is something the coaching staff can maybe take a deeper hand but in. They, and, again, and they can at, try as hard as they want. You're They're talking not about the that. bottom half of the Eastern Conference here. That's four through eight spots. They are going to be up for grabs for the next few months. So if anybody can get their act together, whether it's the Bulls or the Knicks, they could make a push and turn things around. Or Indiana or Washington. We will just have to see if they do. Let's go west for a minute and talk Warriors. This Draymond Green impressive rebound and put back with 28 seconds left. That helped Golden State pull away from a stubborn Nuggets team last night. Also gave Green his second triple-double of the season. 15 points, 10 boards, 13 assists. Not bad. Not a hard thing to do, apparently, though, according to Draymond himself. No, I don't care at all. Um, it's not really a focus of mine. Uh, trust me, if, if I cared, I'd have a lot more than what I have one this year, two. I'd have a lot more than that if I cared. You care. <laughs> it, it's getting a triple-double ain't that easy. So say that to somebody else. Listen, getting a triple-double is hard in the NBA. You can't just say, I'm going to go get them every night. You're not Russ. You're a great player, Draymond. You can't get triple-doubles. But just to say that you can go get one every night when you feel like it, I'm not buying it. Considering that last year he had a couple of games yes. that we know about. He didn't have KD either. Well, I'm just saying, no, but I'm saying there were a couple of games last year where the game, one game where the game was in hand mm-hmm. against Phoenix, right. where he got mad because he got pulled out the game because he won that triple double. Another game they almost lost to the worst team in the league in Philly because he was trying to play this. He's playing like 2K. But should we give him credit for the <laughs> fact that he has made a big deal about this season? His only personal goal was going to be also a team goal. If he can win Defensive Player of the Year and have that be his personal goal instead of the triple doubles, then that will also help the no, team. How about winning a championship as a personal goal? That's it. All right, right? That's what happened it. to that? I mean, that, I that, assume, that matters. I that matters. That is included in the bundle. We have to take a quick break, but we have a lot more of the jump on the way. We will talk about what's going on with the Cavs infirmary, food poisoning, the sniffles. We will also be joined by media mogul Maverick Carter. Uh, he and LeBron James are giving away money, people. Yeah. So yeah. stay tuned. Let me get some. Yeah, let me hold a mill. <laughs> 
We are joined now by the show's executive producer, Maverick Carter. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. This is good. You brought this beautiful Thank basketball. I think this is exciting. We're going to add this glow, to the question. It does not glow. Yeah. You want it to glow? Here's That's amazing. It's still pretty cool. Though. <laughs> I need about 100 Is that going to give you $500,000? <laughs> it's a basketball show, so I figured I'd bring a basketball. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Smart nice. like that. This is, of course, uh, part of the in entertainment empire that you have with LeBron James. And we're going to get to the rest of your whole media moguling in a little bit, but tell me about the game show, because the promos do talk about money that could change your life. And that struck a chord with me because it seems very in tune with the athlete experience. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think, as Jack said, ball changed his life, ball changed LeBron's life, and the show happens to have balls. You get the questions right. The ball's green, as you can see it coming down the wall. You get the question wrong. The ball is red, but most, most importantly, the show is there to change regular people's lives, people from regular communities, the same communities that I come from, LeBron comes from, Jack comes from, people from regular communities who have real stories the same way we do. The show is meant to change their lives in a good way, and we've done that. I mean, our first episode, which was on on 1219, the family won $1.3 million. Mm. That we LeBron, that clip, right? LeBron oh. and I happened to deliver ourselves to the... A family. large bag. A large bag. <laughs> I need a large bag. A large bag. bag. <laughs> That's what I need, a large I mean, bag. We have a clip of that. I mean, it's pretty amazing to Woo. see Woo. this happen. When you guys were sitting around, Too what bad. was the conversation that said, we want to... We want to because this is obviously personal for y'all. Like, we want to change these people's lives in this way. It's not like a typical game show. No, what, uh, the show was... The, the, crea the show's creator, Andrew Glassman, brought us the show... We developed it with him, but the idea from the very beginning was when we cast the show to, to go out and find people to be on the show, to find real people with real stories from real communities who have something that they actually want to do with the money. Each right. couple, there's some sisters that come on the show, they actually have things that they want to do with the money, and that was very important to us. Because that's how we live and, and work, and that's what we work for every day also. That's so awesome. That's I love awesome. that. You guys also, of course, have the digital channel uninterrupted, and that gives us athletes' perspectives on things. I mean, what's the biggest challenge when running that site? The biggest challenge is finding finding the right stories to tell with the athletes and finding athletes who want to tell their story their way. Mm -hmm. And we've been lucky as, you know, we've, we've done a great piece called Rebuilt with Chris Bosch, mm -hmm. where he actually directed a series on his struggle to come back and get back into the NBA that you guys have obviously discussed many times on the show and his battle with the heat to get back on the floor. He directed that, and that was in real time. We're doing a series right now called Flashback with Dwayne Wade about going back to Chicago, and obviously you guys talked about the Bulls and what they're going through on the court, but Flashback is all about his life in Chicago right. off the court. We're working in Illinois. Exactly. The <laughs> next episode will be about him going to watch his son now at Mount Carmel High School play, amazing. which is going to be amazing. I was sure. just looking at it this morning. That's very cool. I mean, we, we've talked about this for months in the past, you know, about the idea that this is a great compliment, right, to the media that we do, I, the regular. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you talk about, uh, I mean, these are stories that we would not know otherwise, right? Sometimes it's because an athlete isn't comfortable opening up in a scrum talking about these things. Sometimes it's because they don't have enough time, right? right? In sound bites, this gives us a nice kind of little chunk of time for guys to talk about. By the way, I got to say this. One of my favorite shows is Survivor's Remorse, man. Thank you. I, I love appreciate that. Show, that. Man. I Thank love you. that show. I won't lie. When I first heard you guys were doing a show about that, I was like, it's going to be corny. They're going to whitewash a lot of stuff. <laughs> they, I, no, I'm, look, I'll be real. I'm being real with you. I thought, I, I thought, said I wasn't going to cuss. I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought it was. It's cable Bro, TV. You guys did a great job of capturing so much of the basketball experience that a lot of fans don't know about. The stuff with trying to pick the sneaker deal. The stuff where you're talking about you know, some of the PR flood that he had when he, he said something. Uh, out loud and trying to clean it up. All that stuff was so accurate. I really love that show, man. And and you know it. I'm not here just blowing smoke. Right. Well, clearly from the way you started that. Thank sentence, you. I, I mean, really appreciate that. And the, the the purpose of that show. And and I'm glad you said the word corny because that's a word as Jack that gets under my skin. Like <laughs> if someone says something I did was corny, then we did the wrong thing. And the idea behind that show was to tell authentic stories right. that come from that world. Some of the stories come from my life. Some of the stories come from LeBron's life, stories Jack can relate to, other athletes can relate to, and we wanted to tell real stories that real people can relate to. And it's really a family show. Yeah. Basketball happens to be the backdrop, mm -hmm. but as Jack knows, when you play basketball, family is really what it's about. Basketball just happens to be the engine and the fuel that allows the family to live and do all the things that they do. And that's everything we do at Spring Hill. We want it authentic. We want people like yourself to watch it and go, 
Jack to watch Richard go, that's real. That's yeah. something yeah. I can really relate to.